Hi, I'm Greg Scott, author of Bullseye Breach, a business book disguised as a thriller about how Russian criminals steal 40 million customer credit card numbers from a fictional retailer named Bullseye Stores, and they do it right under the noses of people who should have been more alert. Do you think words like ransomware are gobbledygook and they don't apply to you because you're not running a national security operation? Well, think again. Invest a few minutes with this mini-seminar and you'll realize this stuff is right in your 21st century office cubicle and it's in your living room. Short and sweet, I want to talk about five things in this mini-seminar. What is ransomware? Why should you care? How do you prepare? And those rhyme on purpose, by the way. What if it happens to you? And what is pick your organization that's not you doing about it? By the way, if you want to contact me, just leave a message in the contact form on my website and I'll get back to you. So what is ransomware anyway? The definition of ransomware is malicious software inside your computer that scrambles all your files. Think of your family pictures for the past 10 years, or maybe the operational procedures to shut down your nuclear reactor in an emergency, or maybe your accounting records the day before your tax audit or all the processes and procedures to operate your 911 system if you're a police force. Everything's scrambled, and everything can be unscrambled if you pay extortion money. That's ransomware. Unscramble your documents in return for a ransom. People usually ask me two questions about ransomware. First, how did it get into my system? And second, how do I know the attackers will give me the key to unscramble everything if I pay up? Well, I'll address question one in a minute, but first... How do we know attackers will give you the keys to unlock your stuff after you pay? Short answer is you don't. They are crooks after all. But it is in their interest to deliver, and most victim reports suggest that these clowns provide excellent customer service navigating the ins and outs of Bitcoin. I know a few real companies who could learn about customer service from these guys. I read one story where the victim said he was so impressed with the quote-quote customer service, he almost forgot he was being robbed. Think about it. If these guys don't deliver the keys to unlock your data, why would anybody pay up? Now let's address that first question. How did this evil software get into my system? Here's where it gets interesting. We call undiscovered vulnerabilities zero days in the IT industry because software developers can't start patching vulnerabilities until day one after they find out about them. Now, as you can imagine, there's a thriving underground market for zero days. Software vendors want to fix them. Cyber attackers want to exploit them. Security researchers spend every day hunting for them, and some sell what they find to governments or the highest bidder. You can make a lot of money selling zero days. Microsoft Windows had a vulnerability with an old file sharing protocol called SMB1 that most Windows systems still leave turned on to this day. Exchange the right sequences of messages with a sequence with that vulnerability to gain control over it. But nobody at Microsoft knew about the problem. Apparently, the United States National Security Agency either found or bought that zero day and kept it a secret. Now think about this for a minute. The United States federal government, the people who are supposed to be the good guys, use the exact same tactic as the bad guys, presumably to spy on other bad guys. Now, you'd think that after everything that went down with the Edward Snowden incident, the NSA would have locked itself down. After all, the NSA is the agency in charge of keeping secrets and finding out about other countries' secrets, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Somebody penetrated the NSA again in early 2017 and stole more secrets, including that zero day the NSA had been sitting on, and a group that calls themselves the Shadow Brokers published it. Somebody looked at what shadow brokers published and used that zero day to deliver a ransomware payload to scramble everything on the system on which it's running and then copy itself to other vulnerable systems. Once once unleashed, WannaCry spread fast, shutting down a large telecom carrier in Spain and several hospital chains in England. Apparently, the Russian Interior Ministry and several universities in China were also victims. It was an equal opportunity exploiter. And that's ad hoc collaboration in action. The good guys can learn from that. I have a write-up on my website about WannaCry details. Just go to dgregscott.com, D as in Daniel. 
Click on Resources and go to WannaCry information. WannaCry was a special case, and it generated its 15 minutes of intense fame because it exploited that zero day. The Not Petty attack in late, in late June 2017 exploited that same zero day plus a couple of others, and it also used a compromised software update. I have a hunch there's attackers out there planning more. See my many seminar about trust on the internet for some background on all this. Anyway, most of the time, ransomware attacks are more mundane. Open the wrong email attachment, visit the wrong website, fall for somebody's phishing scheme, and you unwittingly run the wrong program and now you're a statistic. See my many seminar about spam and phishing for more on that. That's phishing with a PH. Now, now, everything important on your computer is scrambled, and you need somebody on the other side of the planet to unscramble it. For a price. And that's why you should care. If you get hit by a ransomware attack and you're not prepared, there's no sugarcoating this. You're screwed. I hope you don't have anything important stored inside your computer. And if you enjoy Russian Roulette, just blow this warning off. Don't worry about it. Play Russian Roulette. So how do you prepare? I'm going to give you six words to remember. If you don't remember anything else I tell you, remember this catchy phrase. You ready? Here goes. Care and share to be prepared. For busy people, that's everything you need to know about cybersecurity. Let me give that to you again. Care and share to be prepared. Naturally, there's a bunch of detail behind my catchy rhyme. First, care enough about this stuff to do something about it. Just like the slide says, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Same as 20 years ago, you need two things to fight ransomware, vigilance and good backups. Vigilance includes all the advice we've heard over the years. Don't open email attachments. Be careful about web what websites you visit. Don't fall for scams. Keep antivirus signatures up to date. All that advice still applies. But you might do everything right and still get hit. That NotPetya attack hit Ukrainian victims hard because of a compromised software update. My mini-seminar about trust described how that could theoretically happen. The actual attack went down a few months after that. It's scary stuff. And that's where good backups come in. I want to give you some backup tactics here. I know backups are boring and nobody likes to think about them and it gets worse because I'm going to suggest you spend money you probably don't want to spend. Balance that against the risk of losing everything to an overseas crook. If you're a CEO and you enjoy standing in front of the TV cameras and telling the world about how you take security seriously after you've been picked clean, blow all this off. The hard truth is if you end up as a ransomware victim you only have two, we, you have three choices. You can recover from backups, you can pay the extortion money, or you can lose everything. And don't expect anyone from law enforcement to help you. Even some law enforcement agencies have been caught with their pants down, and they ended up paying ransom money. Just ask the Tewksbury, Massachusetts Police Department if they wish now they'd had good backups. Let's say you're a personal computer user. Please tell me your computer does not have your single one and only copy of your taxes and last year's vacation pictures. You have a system in place to make backup copies of everything important, right? Right? If you run your backups to an external hard drive, get three of them. That's right, not one, not two, but three. If most of what you do is internet games and maybe you have a few pictures and some documents and that's it, then copy all those pictures to each of those three hard drives. Every time you add pictures or new documents, copy it all again. Why three? Because if one gets trashed, you still have two more copies. Now this is important. Remember this. Anything your computer knows about, malicious software inside your computer will also know about. So if you leave that external hard drive connected to your computer, the odds are good that a ransomware attack will scramble your backup copies. That's what happened in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. They thought they were safe because they backed up to an external hard drive. But the malicious software in one of their computers found it, and the rest is history. So only connect that external hard drive to your computer when you're copying to it. What if you're more sophisticated? 
Maybe you're an author and you keep revisions of your novel. And maybe you keep taxes for the last 10 years and bazillions of other documents and all your family finances. And you're updating things all the time. Now you need some automation. Keep the same three external hard drives and get a second computer. You heard that right. Get a second computer. That second computer has one job to run backups. You have a work computer and a backup computer. Your work computer shares everything with your backup computer, and your backup computer pulls files from the work computer and makes save sets onto one of those external hard drives. In this case, leave them connected, but connected to the backup computer, not the work computer, and swap every Tuesday and Friday. You keep seven copies of everything on each external hard drive, and if you're diligent with your swaps, every drive will have parts of two different weeks. So if you lose an external drive, you've lost part of two weeks of backups, but you haven't lost a full week. So you can still restore from yesterday and most of the prior three weeks. How is this effective? Malicious software can only corrupt what it knows about. Since your work computer doesn't know about backups, any malicious software inside your work computer will be equally in the dark. Make sure you turn on your backup computer's personal firewall in case a zero-day attack hits your work computer and it starts probing, aka WannaCry. What if you have multiple computers or your business? Same idea. Have one computer dedicated to backups and keep a buffer between that system and your work systems. And if you like backing up to a cloud service instead of external hard drives, same thing. In this case, your backup computer knows about the cloud service, not your working computers. Don't fall into this trap, though. Offsite by itself does not imply safety. Offsite done properly can help you sleep better at night. So do it properly as I described here. Play this back a few times if you need to. So what if you find yourself a ransomware victim? If you're prepared, well then clean your systems, restore from backups, give the finger to your attacker, and life goes on. But do one other thing. Tell the world what happened. Tell the world what you did wrong, what you did right, and what you learned so other people can learn from you. If we all share at the appropriate time, instead of hiding forever behind, it's an ongoing investigation, then we can level the playing field against cyber attackers. That's the care and share to be prepared part. Here's another question I get asked all the time. Why doesn't, and then pick your organization, the FBI, the CIA, the police, big companies, you name it. Why doesn't somebody do something about all this? Well, the short answer is there's not much any one organization can do about ransomware or cyber attacks in general. That's why it's so commonplace. The Internet spans the world, and there's no single authority that controls it. It was designed that way from day one. You're asking the wrong question. The right question to ask is, what can I do about it? And it's not like pushing a boulder uphill. I can do plenty. If I, if I can care enough about it, I can care enough about it to educate myself about how this stuff works. I can share what I've learned, and I can be prepared, and I can rinse and repeat as I learn more. And that's your takeaway from all this. Everything you need to know about IT security and fighting ransomware is, is, is tucked into this little sentence. Care and share to be prepared. Everything flows from that. It's easy to remember. It even rhymes. Don't be intentionally ignorant because ignorant has consequences. If a bullet is flying at your head and you close your eyes, that bullet is still flying at your head. Share what you learn and expect other people to share with you. Use your brain. You don't need to be a drone. I need to leave you with one final warning. Buy your copy of Bullseye Breach today, but don't start reading until a Friday afternoon because once you start, you won't be able to put it down, and this gives you the whole weekend to recover from jet lag after staying up all night reading. And if you like what you read, please leave me a nice review on Amazon and all the other online review sites. Authors use these reviews to build credibility so we can keep writing. And thanks for putting up with my amateur narration.